this setup is a little more complicated and delicate than the native VR support from games like Project Cars 2. F1 2020 doesn't have any native VR support, so I'm using Warpux here to adapt the title on the fly for use with a headset. The game is natively compatible with the motion platform. As you can see, we've started with a crash, and this happened because I pressed record, and the recorder switched away from the game, which it didn't like at all. This only happens when Vorpux is enabled, it's not something that happens normally with the game, it's usually pretty stable. Starting it back up, you can see the game load again, and Vorpux reattach. It has taken some tweaking to get this to work in a way that's both believable, and that doesn't make me want to vomit immediately. I found that using the immersive screen mode in Vorpux with the 3D set to Z adaptive is giving me usable results that I can race with. I've set the FOV to the maximum in the game and I'm using the default native head tracking from Vorpux 2. There is an article about doing this with Open Track and Formula 1 2019. That doesn't seem to be necessary now with head tracking for 2020, so that is an improvement because you had to start Open Track first and then start the game, and as mentioned, the game is quite sensitive to contact switching when Vorpux is running, so that can be problematic to actually get the game to start in the first place. I'm running a My Team campaign here, and I'm in the middle of FP2 in Melbourne, as you can see. I did spin off before I saved the game last time out, so I'm having some wing damage repaired as we start. Car repairs have set us back a little. Not entirely sure what is wrong with the feed from the camera here, but it does seem to be having some difficulty. Apologise for that. One of the workarounds I've had to employ is the use of a second keyboard to recenter the VR from within the motion platform because Vorpux doesn't let me bind this to a control on the wheel. A native VR title, you can reserve a control for this in the likes of Project Cars 2 that I have a button on the wheel that allows me to recenter. Within the headset, this is quite a different experience, but actually, what has been recorded is just the footage from the game, so you can't see that the headset moves independently of the screen image so this sort of wraps around your face a little more and the 3D effect is applied to the text as well so it looks a bit broken up. It is workable though. To view information on your current levels of tyre wear and damage, press the MFD button to open the multifunction display, and then again to cycle to the tyres and damage screen. Engine fired, we're set. On leaving the pit lane, it became apparent that my upshift paddle wasn't working and I couldn't get out of first gear. Um, you can shift down a gear to neutral, but couldn't shift out of first. Um, couldn't shift back to first once I'd got to neutral. So I've had this happen with the game once before. A solution really to get up and replug the wheel. Uh, to get it to stop messing about. So here we go again, and while this has resolved the issue, once I get out of the pit lane I can shift down to first gear, it quickly becomes apparent that one of the other settings that I maintain with the wheel is that the wheel lock has not been reset. I'm also struggling slightly because the wheel hasn't re-centred by itself when it turned on, so it had the left lock still stuck on it, which is why I switched to the left as well the lane. So I can shift back up to the gears, this is looking more more likely, and then I get to the point where I want to turn in, and I realise that my wheel is incredibly less sensitive than it should be, because it has a wider range of operation configured for its motion. This is less than ideal, normally I race with a 280 degree or 260 degree clamp in the Formula 1 game, because the wheel, just turning the wheel this hard is fairly difficult to do for this kind of game, it's not really the way that I like to drive the car to have it set a bit more directly than this and it doesn't give me the control that I'm after for the game.
I will have a decent go, trying to get around the lap here. Coming back to the gears, the motion platform is working as well. The camera feed isn't doing particularly well, the frame rate capture seems quite low down, so you can't really see the rig moving, but it is moving quite well in time with the car. And the feed from the game is good. Again, this is natively supported um, by Sim Racing Studio. The game feeds the line straight to it. Did not go to plan in the slightest. Not only have I broken the front wing, I've also delaminated the left front tyre. So this has not gone well at all. And I maintain that this is all Mobile's fault. It's clearly no no fault of mine. I haven't driven into the wall by, by sheer lack of talent alone. I've just been let down by my hardware. Clearly, that's what's happening. But if Lewis Hamilton's going to win a race like this, then I can get back to the pits like this, surely. If you're going to overtake me, Latifi, you need to just overtake me. Don't linger in the way. What was that about? Christ knows. And yes, I know there's a yellow flag. It's me that's causing it. This game, unlike Project Cars as well, doesn't let you have control of your vehicle in the pit lane, which is a wild source of irritation, because I do quite like that part of Project Cars, just having full control of your car in the pit lane at all times. Seems much more natural, um, particularly when you've got the motion platform on, because the, the, the game takes control away from you at a certain point. What is nice is that the motion platform continues to work, though, so you can feel the car respond to being jacked up, put on the stands, push back into the garage, stuff like that. The motions are a lot more subtle, obviously, than the ones that you face when you're out on track, but it is nice that you can still get that information back from the car, and it, it does add to the immersion of being pushed back into the garage. So I'm going to try and fix the camera, and I'm going to try and fix the wheel range, and have another go, and come back out and show you an actual you know, half-decent racing lap. Uh, this setup has slowed me down slightly from a static sim rig, uh, partly because I'm using cockpit view now, and partly because it's harder to drive with the motion. Do you mind? Better. No, 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 no. Bits of car everywhere has not gone well. Thank you. 
Oh, missed it. Missed the breaking point entirely. And again. <laughs> 